After at least seven of Russia's much-hyped invincible Kinzel missiles were intercepted by the Patriot air defense system in just its first few weeks of operation, Russia now appears to be trying to save face by charging three of its leading hypersonic scientists with treason. Let's talk about what this means for Kinzel and why Russia may just be killing off its hopes for a hypersonic future, all to avoid a little embarrassment. Now, around here, we've known for a long time that Russia's KH-47M2 Kinzel missile is not a modern hypersonic weapon. Instead, it's an air-launched ballistic missile. In fact, it's a direct iteration of the 9K720 Iskander-M short-range ballistic missile that started development all the way back in 1988. What separates Kinzel from the Iskander-M is really just an air-to-ground guidance system and the ability to be carried aloft by either a MiG-31 or a Tu-22 bomber. Now, the hypersonic hype surrounding Kinzel is intentional, but it's based around confusion around the word hypersonic and its various definitions in common use today. Technically speaking, hypersonic is a word that we use to describe any body that travels fast enough to actually affect the chemistry of the air that it interacts with, which tends to happen at right around Mach 5. So we call anything faster than Mach 5 technically hypersonic. But hypersonic missiles are actually more than that. You see, ballistic missiles have been flying at hypersonic speeds since their very inception with Germany's V-2 rocket all the way back in World War II. What separates modern hypersonic weapons from these ballistic missiles that can fly at hypersonic speeds is the ability to maneuver while flying at those sustained speeds. You see, air defense systems intercept inbound missiles a lot like a quarterback throws a pass to a receiver. You don't throw the ball at where the receiver is right now, you throw the ball to where the receiver is going to be by the time the ball gets there. So air defense systems calculate the trajectory of an inbound missile and then launch an interceptor missile to the point in that predicted course that the missile will be by the time the interceptor arrives. But because hypersonic missiles can change course, it renders those calculations moot. And because hypersonic missiles travel so fast, there isn't enough time to calculate again and launch another interceptor. And all that brings us to the myth of Kinzel's maneuverability, because while there have been a number of Russian claims saying that Kinzel can maneuver at hypersonic speeds, to date there has been absolutely no evidence to substantiate those claims. And therein lies the first logic trap in Kinzel discourse, because you'll find lots of people online who refuse to accept any level of evidence that a Kinzel missile was intercepted by Ukraine, despite the fact that their position that Kinzel is difficult to intercept in the first place is based on an evidenceless claim. Now, despite entering service in 2017, Kinzel made its combat debut in March of 2022. And almost immediately after, experts in the West asked, why? Ukraine's dated Soviet air defense systems were already little threat to less expensive and less rare Russian missile systems, and the assumption was that Russia opted to use the Kinzel as a deterrent demonstration to NATO, showing them that Kinzel was in service and that they could use it, potentially even with a nuclear warhead on board, if NATO opted to get involved in the conflict. But it wasn't long before cracks in Russia's story began to emerge, and as Western journalists were running stories about how Kinzel was nowhere near as capable as Russia had claimed it to be, the first Russian hypersonic scientist from the Kristyanovich Institute of Applied and Theoretical Mechanics, Anatoly Maslov, was charged with treason. And then just a few months later, after another series of Kinzel strikes in Ukraine, his colleague, Alexander Shipiluk, was charged with treason as well. This time, just days before MiG-31s with nuclear-capable Kinzel missiles were deployed to Kaliningrad. And this time, there was no question that Russia was trying to use Kinzel to deter NATO's involvement in the conflict. Now, it's been reported that Russia has launched as many as 50 Kinzel missiles at Ukrainian targets since this invasion began, and obviously not all of those are about deterrent messaging. It's been logically posited that Russia may just be running low on lower-cost precision munitions, forcing them to use their more expensive weapons. 
but things really started to change in April of this year. That's when the first elements of America's MIM-104 Patriot Air Defense System arrived in Ukraine. Now, Patriot's been around since the late 80s, and you may have even heard about its poor performance against ballistic missiles during 1991's Gulf War. But as we've learned from many a subsequent report, as well as from our conversations with Sergeant First Class Long, who's a Patriot operator, maintainer, and instructor for the U.S. Army, who goes by the name Habitual Line Crosser on TikTok and YouTube, Patriot has seen significant upgrades since. And that was immediately evident when, within a week of the Patriot system being deployed to defend Kyiv, reports began to surface of a Kinzel missile being intercepted. Now, in the days that followed that intercept, there was a massive Russian disinfo campaign aimed at convincing you that that intercept never happened. But the following week, when six more Kinzels were intercepted, one of them potentially even damaging the Patriot battery, well, then it became a lot harder to pretend these intercepts weren't happening. And wouldn't you know it, just as Western media was finally starting to report on the fact that this Kinzel Doomsday missile was really nothing more than an air-launched ballistic weapon, well, another of Russia's scientists responsible for their hypersonic missile efforts was arrested and charged with treason. Now, Russia has kept the details of these charges classified so far, but last Monday, a group of these scientists' colleagues from the Kristyanovich Research Institute published an open letter, basically saying that their peers had been arrested for just doing their job, and that they had actually had significant security oversight to ensure none of them could possibly have revealed any kind of secret information. Basically, they're positing that Russia, or maybe more accurately Vladimir Putin's regime, is throwing their peers under the bus to protect Putin's reputation. After all, he's the one who claimed that Kinzel was a modern hypersonic weapon for which the West had no defense. And that narrative may just fly in Russian-friendly circles who are eager to believe that Putin's never wrong, or at least don't want to go to jail for suggesting that he could be. And then, of course, there's the other Russian narrative that these scientists were charged with treason because the weapon they produced didn't perform the way they claimed it would. But that doesn't add up either. Obviously, this weapon would have been tested before going into service, and the Russian military would have been well aware of its actual capabilities. In other words, that narrative is just another short-sighted effort to save face. And the truth is, these efforts to stave off embarrassment may well end Russia's hypersonic future for good, or at least for a good long time. Because, as you might imagine, there aren't a lot of scientists clamoring for these jobs now that they know full well that if Russian weapons perform poorly in Ukraine, they're gonna be charged with treason. And I'm not just paraphrasing here, I'm gonna quote the letter from the Kristyanovich Institute scientists directly. The work we're awarded for and lauded as examples for today becomes grounds for criminal prosecution tomorrow. In these circumstances, it's simply impossible for our institute to work. Now, some of you probably already know that last week I was in Atlanta visiting Hermius, a firm actively developing the world's first reusable hypersonic drones for the U.S. Air Force and for commercial applications. And while I was there for their podcast and for an episode of Air Power to Come, I wasn't alone. I was joined by Dr. Chris Combs from the University of Texas, San Antonio. Now, Dr. Combs is a hypersonics expert, and while the two of us talked to Hermius's team about all things hypersonic, you better believe the question of these treason charges popped up. So I asked Dr. Combs how these charges were reverberating within the academic world. And he told me that while he doesn't know these scientists personally, he does know others who do. Dr. Combs echoed the sentiments in this open letter, telling me that it is very unlikely that leading scientists and engineers will have any interest at all in pursuing advanced Russian military programs. After all, you don't want to be the next scientist just thrown under the bus because Vladimir Putin misspoke or intentionally misled the public. And that has huge implications for the future of advanced Russian weapons programs, especially in the hypersonic field. You see, engineering prowess and technological brilliance has never been geographically limited. What ultimately decides the capabilities that a nation is able to field usually comes down to resource allocation and political support, because scientists are always eager to work on these programs if they can just get the funding to do so. 
But if your leading scientists and engineers want nothing to do with your advanced defense programs, well, then you're going to have an awful lot of trouble fielding anything of significant value. So ultimately, it comes down to just a few possibilities, and none of them are a good look for Russia. Either Russian scientists were able to mislead the entire military apparatus, which would mean Russian military leadership is even more incompetent than we thought, and the Russian weapons testing apparatus is horrendous, or Russia is actively pinning this failure on the scientists responsible for developing and fielding the nation's most advanced weapon systems. And if that's the case, well then, Russia likely won't have many scientists working on their next slew of advanced weapons. And this isn't the only place Russia has been extremely short-sighted in this conflict. The decision to pull flight instructors out of their academies and put them directly into frontline service alone shows that Russia was not prepared for a prolonged conflict. And ultimately, whether Russia wins or loses in Ukraine, in terms of overarching strategic goals, Russia has already lost. Even if Russia manages to win this war in Ukraine, the amount of combat capacity in terms of troops and equipment that they've already lost inside Ukraine's borders, as well as the technological prestige they've lost from things like this Kinzel debacle, the days of Russia being a global powerhouse have already come to an end, and we are actively seeing the blame game and finger pointing begin within Putin's regime. And that does not bode well for the future of Russia. And on that ends this special edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Let me know what you guys think of this unscripted, just me talking to the camera approach. And don't forget to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.